Hello John. Hello Oliver. So we're going to talk about nursing homes and their benefit to people, to the elderly. Um, we have many schemes now set up in Ireland um, where people can actually give over their assets, their house, part of their pension to look after their care in older, in, in, in elderly life in a nursing home. Yeah, people that need to have nursing care because they're not able to look after themselves. So um, it's called uh, apparently a fair deal scheme introduced by Mary Harney when she was Minister for Health for a long time. One thing I remember about Mary Harney when apparently there was a shortage of nurses because of the stupid policies that they adopted whereby they had to have a, a university education, the leaving cert wasn't good enough. Uh, where before the, the, the had to have was a primary cert and they were turned out to be the best nurses that was in demand worldwide. I don't hear them being in that much demand now with all this education. So, um, be that as it may, um, uh, she, she, um, when she was Minister for Health, uh, she brought in this um, um, fair deal scheme for people that needed health care and the word fair deal was mentioned. Uh, myself, I regard it uh, as a completely mis, uh, not at all fair deal. I mean, if a person, uh, as they get old, needs to go into a nursing home, their home should be nothing to do with their stay in the nursing home. Uh, their pension should be sufficient. Uh, to take care of it, leaving a few pounds for themselves and their home should be an asset for their own um, children or whatever it is that they want. That should be sacrosanct. Uh, but this fair deal involved uh, selling a, uh, um, allowing a portion of your home, if not the whole house, uh, to be used for your care, particularly if, you, if you've lived longer than whatever period that they thought that you might survive. Suppose you were in the nursing home for 10 years. Uh, what was going to happen when the house was sold and then the money was running out? Uh, were they going to throw you out then at that stage? No, they don't actually. They, 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 it's, it's like they almost do a little bit of a gamble. They use stats. Well, a gamble. Well, I think it's like a person back in a horse that's uh, in a one horse race, he's going to win, isn't he? Um, no, I, I don't subscribe to the view. Uh, my understanding of fair deal is that uh, you pay uh, whatever it is uh, when you're old, you're in, in receipt of a, a state pension and uh, it's supposed to look after you uh, as, you, as you're well, but if you're not so well, the nursing home then is there and the state should supply whatever it is the cost uh, because you're paid your taxes all your life, you're entitled to some decent quality of life when you're no longer able to look after yourself. That's what a caring um, society does and when Mary Harney was 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 uh, health minister, I recall one situation that she did at the time was go to Africa looking for nurses in Africa. Now here they were introduced the business of university and now, by the way, the same nurses are uh, regarding them want to be compared to graduates. So this is the danger with all this qualification, that suddenly, instead of being a nurse, it's your high qualification sort of that counts, and, and you get a kind of a high opinion yourself. So this is what Mary Harney does. She went to Africa, and I presume the people in Africa mightn't have been as well qualified as the world here, or as well university trained. Perhaps they become nurses after a primary cert, the equivalent in that country. So they were good enough to be looking for them to come over here, which is a very peculiar thing to do. Now this Mary Harney, there was the health minister, and for many years, and I think presided over its collapse as it is today, she laid the groundwork for it as a, Fianna Fáil, or a PD, former Fianna Fáil minister, and, um, uh, and brought in all this uh, um, chaos that we have in the hospital system. And here she is now, by the way, being uh, co-opted onto the b a board of a company called Brindley Healthcare, uh, which provides a lot of, um, it's a privately owned nursing home group. And it's... Um, it's Ireland's largest. It's Ireland's largest. And um, it has eight nursing homes and more than 400 beds. And probably it will be able to expand for more because they'll get other monopoly situations coming in 
and using it as a, a profit making machine because that's what it looks like to me um, a profit making machine uh, this country uh, before all these nursing homes become established a lot of people were often looked after by their families and indeed I remember and ran aunt of mine and she was an invalid up, up in bed all the time and she was looked after by her sister and by other members of that family and I remember visiting her myself she was a very kindly saintly type of woman but she was bedridden for years so, like, nowadays she would have been planked into a nursing home. Uh, the care and business of families uh, for their relatives now seems to be like the society we live in, the abortion throwaway society. It doesn't seem to possess those qualities that they, that they, that they talk about uh, at the times in the 50s and the 60s, as it was the dark ages when it was a very human and good time. People were looked after. Now, there are uh, uh, fair deals in nursing homes. It's should, a fair deal. should Mary Harney have taken up the position? Not under any circumstances. As a former minister for health, she'd be in possession of about a hundred or more thousand a drinking year in pensions from the various ministerial positions she had in her time at the Dáil, if not more than a hundred thousand. So what she's taken up that, or even what she even considers it uh, to do, it's a mystery. Uh, as a health minister, she should have nothing whatsoever to do with somebody providing fair deal schemes in nursing homes. Brindley Healthcare wouldn't be in that, they're in it to make a profit. Okay. And so is every other person that operates a nursing home. They're not in it for the patient, they're in it to make a profit and a blinking good profit as well. Okay, so Mrs. Harney was, or Ms. Harney was brought in to Brindley by shareholder BGF Ireland an investment fund backed by the government and the main banks. It recently invested ten million in Brindley to fund acquisitions and growth. So the government are in this as well. Um, and the banks. The banks, their whole lot of them are in, the, are in the it together. Well, you see, uh, it sounds very slow to give money. We hear to, to other businesses that are uh, perhaps going to employ uh, food companies, uh, which is, is the way to go. Uh, but this business of nursing homes and getting funds. Uh, that that's not productive. It's healthcare, uh, so it should be not subject to the sort of things that are out there outlining their money flowing in from banks and that. And they're obviously going to make a profit. So they're all making a cut out of the unfortunate people that have to reside in these homes and pay to the nose for the privilege. Uh, so it shouldn't be the way for for people that have served the country well to be to be treated like that. So do we need legislation in the government to prevent ministers like Mary, Ms. Harney coming along? She introduces the Fair Deal scheme and she profits from the scheme at a later stage when she's, she's no longer the minister. Is, there need necessary, is it necessary to have legislation or something in place? She should, it? well, if that's the case then, uh, well, but the fact is whether there was a legislation or not, uh, a person that would have had her a uh, long experience as Minister for Health and uh, ministers in various other uh, places, uh, places and uh, the leader of the Progressive Democrats, the former Fianna Fáil person she was, the leader of that and um, they're nearly gone, they're, I think they're gone now and here she is taking a position in, in, a, uh, in something that she should never even ordinary decency would indicate that you shouldn't have it, you shouldn't have to have legislation for it. I mean, she, she was well paid and as I say she's in possession of huge pensions from the state. So financial, uh, she does need that financial whatever it is that she gets. So you're saying ethically it's wrong? Well of course it's wrong and if a government has to enact uh, legislation to prevent that, well it just shows you then you have a very peculiar society. Uh, you couldn't trust former ministers. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Oliver.